Fox 5 News at Noon starts right now. More governors across the nation have rolled back mask mandates, but that move now faces resistance as COVID cases linked to the Omicron variant continue to decline. Hear what health officials say about the ongoing and intensified mask debate. It's a painful uh, loss to have our electronic equipment stolen. It's the third time now someone has broken into an Atlanta donut shop and the owner says she's fed up. See what the crook almost got away with in this brazen burglary. But first, Atlanta police say the man who shot an Atlanta police officer is a known gang member. Christian Eppinger is accused of shooting the officer during an attempted arrest. A wounded officer is in the hospital in serious condition as Eppinger faces Fulton County Magistrate Judge. Good afternoon and welcome to Fox 5 News at noon. I'm Portia Bruner. The GBI has taken the lead in the shooting that left an 11 year officer in the hospital, 11 year veteran officer in the hospital. That shooting Monday at the Southwest Atlanta apartment complex prompted a huge police presence. Officers rushed to the scene on Old Hapeville Road, not only to arrest the suspected gunman, but also to provide aid to their wounded comrade at Fox 5's Angelique Proctor joins us live now from Atlanta with details on today's court appearance. Angelique. Well, good afternoon, Portia. That court appearance just wrapped up. Bond was denied for Christian Eppinger. We also learned quite a bit about the suspect, that he has an extensive juvenile history, and he was on probation at the time of this officer-involved shooting. Yesterday, the uh, ADA, the uh, assistant district attorney, also talked a whole lot about his gang activity and even indicated he has a tattoo of his gang on his face. Now, uh, Atlanta police have identified him uh, as a gang member. Uh, we did learn today that he does have a GED and will soon be a father. Now, the officer involved shooting happened on Old Hipville Road yesterday uh, when police were attempting to execute a search warrant or an arrest warrant, pardon me, for armed robbery. Now, officers say Eppinger physically resisted arrest, actually pushed an officer, we just learned, and then pulled out a concealed weapon and started shooting at that officer multiple times. We learned he actually struck the officer six times uh, in the shoulder, the right knee, and the back of the head. Now, we are told that that officer is uh, recovering at Grady Hospital. The judge says, though, that she denied bond. She said that not only does she believe that Eppinger is a flight risk, but that based on his criminal history, it is likely he will strike again. We will have much more on this developing story tonight at 4. Reporting live from Northwest Atlanta, Angelique Proctor. Fox 5 News. So glad that officer is pulling through. Thank you, Angelique. Now we've got some breaking news out of Atlanta where once again, a historically black college must deal with a bomb threat. Moments ago, officials at Spelman College confirmed they received a bomb threat this morning. The statement says the threat had no information about a location of the device. The college has called in Atlanta police to conduct a sweep of the public areas. Spelman has suspended classes and closed campus while authorities investigate. And the GBI has taken the lead in a shooting that left a man and a deputy wounded. Authorities say the deputy spotted a suspicious vehicle this morning in the parking lot of a motel. Detectives tell us they believe the vehicle is linked to an out of state kidnapping. During an encounter, officials say the man shot someone and then deputies returned fire. Authorities say the man returned fire and then shot a deputy in the hand. That deputy is recovering from those injuries. No word yet on the conditions of the suspected gunman and the victim. Attorneys for Clayton County Sheriff Victor Hill have now filed an appeal to his suspension in the Georgia Supreme Court. Sheriff Hill's attorneys have uh, issued a statement which calls the suspension politically motivated. A federal grand jury indicted Hill for civil rights violations last April. Prosecutors accuse Hill of ordering deputies to strap detainees in restraint chairs for hours inside the Clayton County Jail. He's already pleaded not guilty. Governor Brian Kemp suspended Hill last year pending the outcome of the federal case against him. A jury selection continues in the federal hate crimes trial of the three men convicted of state charges of murdering Ahmaud Arbery. A Glenn County judge said 30 out of 52 potential jurors questioned Monday were qualified to stay in the jury pool. 
The judge predicts a final jury will be seated next Monday. Father and son Gregory and Travis McMichael had plans to plead guilty on federal hate crime charges. The McMichaels withdrew their pleas last week after a judge rejected Travis McMichael's deal and the Arbery family objected to the terms. Atlanta police have arrested a woman accused of hitting a small dog with a shoe at an apartment complex. Dwanisha Hitches is charged with child cruelty. Detectives say she's the woman caught on camera hitting the small dog with a shoe at the Landing Square Apartments on Greenbrier Road on December 17th. And now to a Fox 5 News alert. Atlanta police want to find the person you see here in surveillance videos. Officers say he broke into a Northeast Atlanta donut shop overnight. The donut shop owner says the thief got away with some really pricey electronics. Fox 5's Caitlin Pratt has details. There was glass all over um, from the break in. A break in at Revolution Donuts in Northeast Atlanta. Surveillance video showing someone break the glass on a side door of the family run business Tuesday morning. They weren't after any sweet treats. Instead, some high tech gear, grabbing some pricey iPads. When we looked back on the video, we were able to see that someone was in the store and um, took our electronic equipment and attempted to take our cash register. The shop's owner says this is the third time crooks have targeted the shop on Edgewood Avenue. Now she has plans to upgrade security measures so they'll be better prepared. Painful uh, loss to have our electronic equipment stolen. It's um, very expensive to fix a sure. glass door and now we have to just think a little bit more about our security. There have been issues with cars being broken into before too. She says uh, she hopes someone will recognize the person in this video so that she and nearby business owners won't have to be afraid. You just feel vulnerable mm -hmm. and uh, you just think like, okay, I still want to be here. What do I need to do to keep protecting myself? I don't want to end up just having, you know, giant metal doors and bars on everything because we want this to be a welcoming place. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Pratt. Fox 5 News. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Speaker Nancy Pelosi in a moment of silence in remembrance of the more than 900,000 American lives lost to the COVID-19 virus. More than 900,000 men, women, and children have lost their battle with COVID-19. Members of Congress held a vigil Monday on Capitol Hill to mark that milestone and remember the people who died from the virus. Lawmakers joined House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for the somber event. And more states have rolled back COVID-19 health measures as virus-related cases decline nationwide, but the decision to lift mask mandates faces mixed reaction. Fox's Jonathan Series has details. It's a promising sign in the COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, governors in four states announced plans to lift statewide mask requirements in schools, either this month or in March. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy cited a decline in COVID numbers in announcing his timeline. About a dozen other states are keeping their mandates in place for now, but they're facing more pressure to return to normal, with some medical experts adding the decision to end mask wearing is long overdue. There is no quality data demonstrating the benefit for these children wearing these masks in school, but there is data showing the risks and harms associated with it. Connecticut and New Jersey leaders say they'll allow local school districts to decide whether or not to retain their mask requirements. But it's not yet clear how many will take them up on the offer. The Biden administration continues to recommend mask wearing in schools. Our advice to every school district is to abide by public health guidelines. It continues to be at this point. Uh, that the CDC is advising that masks can delay, reduce transmission. The decision to drop face coverings comes as new COVID infections are declining. Cases are now one third of what they were three weeks ago. But deaths, a lagging indicator, are increasing, averaging about 2,400 per day. But they're still in what, what the CDC would categorize as a red stage of transmission, meaning that transmission rate is still high. Public health officials say it could take several more weeks for deaths to follow the declining trends in case counts. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox 5 News.
All right, let's take a check outside, take a peek at the Fox 5 weather deck. There's meteorologist Jeff Hill joining us with a look. At, we can see some sunshine. We can actually feel the sunshine today, even though the forecast is still a little chilly. Yeah, it's a little chilly out here right now. It's a little bit breezy at times, too, so that makes it feel even a little bit colder. There's a lot of rain down to our south. It's complete mess across northern Florida right now with a lot of rainfall that's creeping up over toward the Georgia coast and South Carolina coast and on the northern end of that some cloud cover. So if you just kind of look over at the southern horizon, you can see some of those high clouds. You can see them right here on our uh, visible satellite imagery. A lot of cloud cover south of Atlanta you get anywhere north of Atlanta. Skies are completely blue and that's what we have right now from this view. Current temperature we've got 51. We're looking at maybe about 56 later on this afternoon. There's that north wind coming in at 16 miles an hour. So winds are going to be in that 10 to 15 mile an hour range for much of the afternoon. 51 up in Rome, 47 over in Carrollton. We've got uh, 52 in Athens, 46 up in Blairsville and 52 in Thomaston. Hour by hour forecast for this afternoon. It's going to be nice, a little bit breezy and cool at times. And then we've got the 60s on the way starting tomorrow. More on that for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jeff, thank you. Ahead at noon, the parents of a teenager accused of murder during his Michigan high school classmates could soon, soon stand trial. Stay with us for details on their upcoming court hearing. Plus, find out why this woman is on the radar of Athens police. Investigators say she stole something from another woman that's cost that victim quite a fortune. We think he's a hypocrite and a traitor. It's a Georgia story, and that story should be told now. The debate over a proposed statue of a U.S. Supreme Court justice gets heated at the state capitol. Hear from lawmakers on both sides of the political debate over honoring one of Georgia's native sons. 